Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I've been excited to share this one with you for some time. A couple of weeks ago, I picked up a linear tracking turntable. If you don't know what a linear tracker is, you you are in the right place because I'm going to tell you all about them. We're going to demonstrate it, give it a direct feed sound test. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to Recordology. Behold the Carrera LT120 linear tracking turntable. So we're going to get into this. We're going to do a full review. We're going to do a sound test. But let's start at the top. What is a linear tracking turntable? In its most basic form, a linear tracking turntable tracks the record linearly. I mean, that makes sense, right? So they have these different tone arms that look a little bit different than what we're used to. And instead of it angling across the record, it slides across like this. Why is that a good thing? So on a regular record player, the tone arm pivots. It's got a static position that it's pivoting from. And as such, the stylus, the cartridge, goes across like this. I mean, that's what we're used to. But the thing about it is, the way that that tone arm is positioning the stylus and cartridge in those grooves changes because it's on a semicircle curve. As you can imagine, it's curving across. And as such, the angle of that cartridge and stylus in those grooves kind of does like this. It's not completely straight. In fact, if we are to look at it in a little bit more detail, if you put on a protractor like this, which is used to align a cartridge on a turntable like this, and there's only two places where that cartridge is going to track completely accurate. It's going to be right here and right here. And that's why on a protractor, those are the two positions that you are using to set the proper alignment on your cartridge. So anywhere over here, anywhere in between, or anywhere beyond this are all going to be skewed. You can even see it from this angle, how it's kind of tilted inward, and then over here tilted outward. So that's called tracking error, and it's something inherent in the design of any record player that tracks like this. Now, let's jump to the chase. Are you going to notice a huge difference? No. But a lot, of, a lot of things in the hobby of vinyl and audio is based on theory, is based on, you know, well, this makes more sense, so it should be this way, all that good stuff. This is definitely one of those things. If you were to do a blind sound test, which is a good idea for a show one day, you would probably be like, yeah, it kind of sounds the same. You know, it wouldn't sound necessarily different. So that's, that's the science or the reasoning behind it. Now let's take a look at this Carrera LT120. So behold this beautiful 1980s piece of hi-fi wizardry. This is the Carrera LT120. What's really cool is I even have the owner's manual, which is pretty rare to come across with a vintage turntable. So glad to do so. We have reviewed linear trackers on this show before we reviewed a Marantz turntable. I think that was the only other one. But anyway, we've done it before. This one has an added benefit in that it is programmable. So you can play your records just like you would play a CD player. You can skip to any track you want. You can go back. You can go forward, which is awesome. And what a novelty, especially in the 1980s. This really was... You know, from the 1980s standpoint, this really was an advancement on technology over the previous decade. So very, very cool to see that. So let's take a look in detail at this turntable. It's fully functional. It needs a couple of things here and there, but pretty much complete. Let's start with the controls. So starting down here on the bottom left, we've got the power switch. These are electronic switches. These are not mechanical switches, so they've got a nice sort of futuristic vibe to them compared off of a mechanical spring-loaded switch. Carrera is a brand that you may not recognize. And if you Google search it, you'll find a lot of Porsche stuff, <laughs> but you won't find a lot of audio equipment. However, this unit is fairly prolific. A lot of people say, yeah, that's a good basic linear tracker. It's durable. It's, uh, you know, a lot of them are still around. And it was also sold under other brand names as well because like you i haven't really heard of the brand before either now if we look at these buttons here these are the programmable buttons i think it can store up to 15 positions and we'll show you how that works and literally you can just select and program 
whatever order you want the songs to play in, and it will do that. Think of how amazing that is. This is not a CD player. This is a record player. Um, and that button to clear the memory, a repeat switch. It is two speeds. I wish it was three, but it's two speeds. And there are the transport controls themselves. Now, if we spin around to the back of the unit, there's not a whole lot to look at. It does have a fixed power cord and audio cord over here. So there's not any, there aren't any connections, but this says Carrera Trans-Pacific Marketing, Carrera Product Group, made in Korea. If I had to put a date on this, and I know a lot of you guys are good at the date codes, but I'm just gonna guess 81 to 85. I'm just gonna kind of take it, maybe a little later than that, but that's my guess. So really cool and uh, something that I was excited to get my hands on. Okay, looking on the bottom here, we've got a couple of adjustments here and there. I'm not even, I mean, there's motor speed adjustments there. That makes sense. There's probably a reject point adjustment and things of that nature, but I'm sure that it all comes down to how it functions in terms of when to play, when not to play, all that stuff, where it drops on a seven inch record, where it drops on a 12 inch record. I do want to point out though, that we are missing two feet. So we've got the front two feet here and two missing feet back there. So I'm going to use just a couple of Hudson Hi-Fi new old stock silicone feet. Not new old stock, these are brand new. But these replacement rubberized feet, they're a little, just a hair, hair too tall. So ultimately I need to find something that's got the same sort of elevation as the original ones, but they're better than having nothing. So we're gonna use this for the time being. Obviously any turntable you want it to be as, as level as possible and this will make sure it is much more level. I don't think these ones are adjustable. So that's gonna be a lot better than it was before because it was sort of sloping down on the back without having anything back there. So let's go ahead and set up the turntable the normal way and we'll take a look at what's under the hood. Now, some linear tracking turntables, part of the actual turntable itself is housed in the dust cover. This one is not like that. As you can see, this is just simply a piece of polycarbonate, just like a regular dust cover, although it is tinted on this part right here. And there is some indication there uh, regarding the size of the record. It is in metric 0, 17, and 30, which would translate to 7 inch and 12 inch on there, if you are familiar with the non-metric system. So everything that you need to operate this turntable can be done without the lid. That's not the case with all units. So we already said it is a two-speed turntable. Big question is, is it belt drive or direct drive? Because these came in both flavors. And this one is a belt drive. Where is the motor? There it is. And the little belt right back there, as you can see, not much tension on this belt. This belt is uh, got enough tension to function, but uh, there's not a whole lot of extra give or elasticity left in that. So that's probably going to need replacing. One thing I want to point out right off the bat is I love how thin and streamlined this platter is. It is very thin to the plinth. It maybe raises up a quarter of an inch, if that. So let's go ahead and there's a couple recess areas underneath the platter here where we can... <laughs> Pull this up. This is an aluminum, die cast aluminum platter, which is great. And there is the underside of the beast. Here is the belt. And again, these do come in, you know, direct drive. When I say these, I'm talking about linear turntables. They come in direct drive or belt driven. And, you know, there's arguments for both. We're not going to go into all of that here. You'll see this has sort of a laser warning on that. I'll get to that in a minute. Besides that, there's not a whole lot to see. And in terms of the tone arm, which is, you know, the secret or the difference about this unit, there's not a whole lot to see either. This is going to run on a toothed worm gear, and it is belt driven as well. So even on a direct drive linear tracking turntable, it's going to have a belt for the tone arm. And the, belt, the tone arm just slides laterally across there or linearly across there and that's really all there is to it from the standpoint of what's under the hood not much to it this is a, a plastic plinth you saw there were elements of metal underneath the turntable itself it does have some weight to it it feels quality it does not feel cheap and uh, if i bought something like this i think that i would expect it to work pretty darn well so another distinction that linear tracking turntables have 
in almost all cases over nonlinear tracking turntables is the type of cartridge they use. Now, almost everything we've ever reviewed on this channel uses a standard half inch mount cartridge. Linear trackers usually use what's called a P mount, which is different. You can still buy styli for them. They're not quite as prolific. So they're a little harder to come by and a little harder to find replacements for, but not really. I mean, they're still out there on Amazon and eBay and things of that nature. There's still new old stock available, all that good stuff. And they're fine cartridges, nothing wrong with it. If I look at the spec sheet, which is really nice to have, it doesn't say who makes that cartridge or what model it is, other than that it is a dual magnet. It is a diamond stylus. Oh, it says it's an N120, okay. So there are the specifications. It tracks at two grams. So interesting, very, very interesting. And like I said, when I took the uh, stylus housing off, it did look a little bit different. While we're looking at specs, two-speed two belt-driven, fully automatic, DC servo motor, two speeds, manual override. And there's the SNR, the wow and flutter, all that good stuff. It's a nine-pound unit. This is a really, really good instruction manual. It's got room for notes. That always cracks me up. I need to take some notes here. Uh, but yeah, very illustrative and very well put together. Very easy to read and understand. And I'm, I'm really excited that this is included in this. It was a really a good, good find. Very 80s looking. Look at the pinstripes on that. Very, very 80s. So let's go ahead and fire it up and uh, play with it. And we'll see how it works. And like I said, that belt is still working, but it is pretty dry, you can tell, and it is definitely stretched. So that's a $10 thing, you know what I mean? I would expect to replace a belt. So what do we do? We hit the power button and the thing will come to life. A couple LEDs, everything is LED backlit and red. There also is a sensor adjustment, something we haven't looked at yet down here. It says sensor, sensor L, N, and H. So I'm guessing low, normal, and high. I left that sensor on normal and it seems to be working well. So how does this thing work? The first thing we need is a record, big surprise. This is a good time to point out that a linear tracking turntable may not work if your record is warped, if it is really dirty. It needs to be fairly flat, fairly clean. It's not as sensitive as one of those laser red turntables where it literally reads the groove with a laser beam like a CD player. Those are really cool, by the way, but it's not as sensitive to dirt and stuff as that. But you need to have a record that's not completely destroyed in order for this to work. And what it's going to do when we first get it going is it's going to scan the entirety of the record, shining a laser down. Now you'll see the black or dark line in, in between the tracks. So it uses a, a laser and a refractor sensor and basically shines that beam and it, where it will not refract back or will not reflect back is gonna be the groove area, but where it's shiny and smooth, it'll reflect back and it'll record that position and say that's the track markings for one, two, three, four, five, however many there are. So pretty significant uh, technology, pretty impressive as far as I'm concerned. So it's been sitting for a minute, so I, it went back to sleep. I need to put it back on and choose the power. It's gonna be 33 RPM. Now, if I just hit play, I don't want to do any of the programming stuff. I just want to hit play. All I have to do is hit play. And it goes across, it finds the start of the record, and it drops the stylus accordingly. And it will play through, just like an automatic turntable. It'll bring the tone arm back home and shut itself off, just like a regular automatic turntable. But this thing can do oh so much more. One of my favorite things is just skipping through tracks. And you'll see when we were looking up close, and you can still see it here, the skip button. So when I first got this, I started skipping forward and it, it kept replaying the first track. Any guesses as to why it was doing that? Instead of going on to the next track, it kept playing the same track over and over. And I'm like, well, that's forward skip. You know, I, I grew up in the, in the 80s and 90s. I know how to control a CD player, so this must work like this. Well, I had it backwards. So I was hitting the back skip button. So it's thinking the same direction that the tone arm is headed. So this way where the uh, right skip or what I would consider a forward skip on a CD player is actually a back skip on this unit. In order to go forward, I have to go to the left. So I have to click the left button. But in this mode, what it's doing is it's actually manually allowing you to queue up any part of the song manually. And then you can hit play, it'll drop the stylus and play it right from there. So the only thing that doesn't work right with this turntable 
is the stop button doesn't work. So right down here, it says stop. And yeah, I know I'm not supposed to be moving it around while it's spinning, but um, if I hit stop, it should bring the tone arm home and that just doesn't work on this particular one. So you have to hit the power off button, but it does the same thing. As you can see, it'll stop spinning the tone or it'll stop spinning the record. It'll bring the tone arm home. So it does essentially the same thing. Okay, now what if I want to program some tracks here? So I'm turning it back on. I'm choosing 33 RPM. I'm hitting the memory button, and then I'm going to say, eh, I want to play four. You can see it blink. And then I'm going to play six, and then I want to play two. But wait a minute. Why isn't it staying lit up? Well, that's because just like programming a CD player, you have to hit the memory button in between each program selection. So let's start here with two. Then we hit memory, then four, then I hit memory, then let's go back to three, then I hit memory, then one, memory, and then eight, memory. You'll see that after I hit memory, it locks it in and saves those selections. And you can also choose to repeat as well. So now when we hit play, it's going to scan the entirety of the record to find out where those track delineations are and play my record in the order that I wanted it to be played. And let's see what it does. You can see it going across the different tracks, getting an idea for where those separators are. And now that it understands, it's shining the laser and measuring how far over each track is, it goes ahead and starts playing our playlist, which is really what we've created here. And we started with track two. So track two is the first one to play. Now, if I get antsy and I'm like, you know what? I want to go on to the next song. It turns out I don't like two that much after all. Just hit the forward skip button, and now it goes over to four, which is the next one that I programmed. And you can keep doing that. And it'll go through the order that you programmed, and then it'll bring the tone arm home when you're done. The next track was, in fact, number one. Now, I did program the eight button on there, and as you can see, there's not eight tracks. So let's find out where it goes to when I say I want the eighth track. Does it just go to the last song? It knows that the five tracks on this record plus three equal eight, which is pretty darn amazing. So what do I think about linear tracking turntables? I think they're very cool. It's a little bit of a novelty because as I said, you're not gonna realize a major sound difference unless you have a level of audio equipment that I've never even experienced but on any moderate to entry level equipment system you have, you're just not gonna notice a huge difference. But maybe it's not completely necessary because something to think about is this. This is assuming that perfect tracking on this record is because when it was cut, the lathe cut the original master disc that it used a linear tracking method. However, not all record lathes use that. Some of them use a pivot tone arm just like a regular record player. So you're actually introducing more error by using a linear tracking turntable on a record that was cut or mastered from a disc that used a lathe with a standard typical tracking tone arm. But regardless, they are very, very cool. I think they're fun. I would recommend them. If this is cool to you and this is something you want to pursue, there's no reason not to. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic. So how does it know where the beginning of the record is with this? Because there is no size select switch as we would normally see. You know, there's no place for it to say, okay, it's got a seven inch record on it. It's got a 12 inch record on it. So how does it know? Well, again, it has to do with that laser. So when it's going across and checking out that disc, it's at that point where it says, okay, so the record starts here and it ends here and here's how many tracks it does. But it's intelligent, it's smart. You can build a playlist off of a single record, which is absolutely fantastic. But none of that matters if it doesn't sound good. So let me hook this up and let's do a little bit of a sound test. Okay guys, I'm gonna hit record on the digital recorder and I'm gonna hit play. I programmed some tracks and we're gonna go ahead and give this a listen. It is Enoch Light, but it's not the same Enoch Light we normally listen to. So this is some fresh music and enjoy this record player.
All right, my friends, and that is going to do it. A huge thank you to you. If you are interested in a linear tracking turntable, there's no special way to find them other than eBay. They just pop up. It's rarer to find a linear tracker than a regular articulated arm turntable, but they are out there. So like I said, eBay, garage sales, antique stores, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, all the typical places. Price-wise, you know, some of the Technics ones can go for $1,500, which is pretty crazy. And sometimes they don't cost that much more than a good used turntable, maybe $50 to $100. So keep your eyes peeled if you're interested. Let me know now in the comments below if you've ever seen one like this. If you have a linear tracker, what your thoughts are, would love to get your input. Well, my friends, that's going to do it for today. So happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.